Hello, my darlings. Mother Raven here on another glorious Folklore Thursday. I bring you more Japanese fairy tales and folklore from William Elliot Griffiths. The Seven Patrons of Happiness. Every child knows who the Shichifuku Fin or Seven Patrons of Happiness are. They have charge of long life, riches, daily food, contentment, talent, glory, and love. Their images carved in ivory, wood, stone, or cast in bronze are found in every single house, or sold in the stores, or are painted on shop signs, or found in picture books. They are a jolly company and make a happy family. On New Year's Eve, a picture of the treasure ship Takare Bune, laid with Shippo, the seven jewels, and all the good things of life which men most desire is hung up in houses. The ship is coming into port, and the passengers are the seven happy fairies who will make gifts to the people. These seven jewels are the same as those which Mamotero brought back from the Oni's island. First, there is Fukoruku Jin, the patron of long life or length of days. He has an enormous high forehead, rounded at the top, which makes his head look like a sugar loaf. It is bald and shiny. A few stray white hairs sometimes sprout up, and the barber to reach them has to prop a ladder against his head to climb up and apply his razor. This big head comes from thinking so much. His eyebrows are cotton white, and a long snowy beard falls down over his breast. Once in a while, in a good humor, he ties a handkerchief over his high, slippery crown and allows little boys to climb up on top. That is, if they are good and can write well. When he wants to show how strong and lively he is, even though so old, he lets De Koku, the fat fellow, ride on top of his head while he smokes his pipe and wades across a river. De Koku has to hold on tight or he will slip down and get a dunking. Usually, the old shiny head is a very solemn gentleman and walks slowly along with his staff in one hand, while with the other he strokes his long eyebrows. The tortoise and the crane are always with him, for these are his pets. Sometimes the stag with white hair age walks behind him. Everybody likes Fuko Rukoji because everyone wants to get his favor and live long until, like a lobster, their backs are bent with age. At a wedding, you will always see a picture of a white-bearded and shiny-pated Kukorukochin. Daikoku is a short, chubby fellow with eyes half-sunken, fat, but twinkling with fun. He has a flat cap set on his head, like the kind which babies wear, a loose sack over his shoulder, and big boots on his feet. His throne is two straw bags of rice, and his badge of office is a mallet or hammer, which makes people rich when he shakes it. The hammer is the symbol of labor, showing that people may expect to get rich only by hard work. One end of it is carved to represent the jewel of the ebbing and the flowing tides, because merchants can get rich by commerce on the sea and must watch the tides. He is often seen holding the arithmetic frame on which you can count, do sum, subtract, multiply, or divide by sliding balls up and down a row of sticks set in a frame instead of writing figures. Besides him is a ledger and a daybook. His favorite animal is the rat, which, like some rich men's pets, eats or runs away with his wealth great silver-white radish called Dacon, two feet long and as big as a man's calf, is always seen near him because it signifies flourishing prosperity. He keeps his bag tightly shut, for money easily runs away when the purse is once opened. He never lets go his hammer, for it is only by constant care that anyone can keep money after he gets it. Even when he frolics with Fukurukuchin, and rides on his head. 
He keeps his hammer ready, swinging at his belt. He has a huge lop ears. Once in a while, when he wishes to take exercise, and Fukujuko Rin wants to show how frisky he can be, even if he is old, they have a wrestling match together. Daikoku nearly always beat because Fukuruko Jin is so tall that he has to bend down to grip Daikoku, who is fat and short, and thus he becomes top heavy. Then Daikoku gets his rival's long head under his left arm, seizes him over his back by the belt, and throws him over his shoulder flat on the ground. But if Fukuruko Jin can only get a hold of Daikoku, lop ears, both fall together. Then they laugh heartily and try it again. Ibisu is the patron of daily food, which is rice and fish, and in old times was chiefly fish. He is nearly as fat as Daikoku, but, but wears a court noble's high cap. He is always fishing or enjoying his game. When very happy, he sits on a rock by the sea with his right leg bent under him and a big red fish called the tie under his left arm. He carries a straw wallet on his back to hold his fish and keep it fresh. Often, he is seen standing knee deep in the water, pole in hand, watching for a nibble. Some say that a bitsu is the same scamp that goes by the other name of Sosano. Hotai is the patron of contentment, and of course is the father of happiness. He does not wear much clothing, for the truth is that all his property consists of an old ragged wrapper, a fan, and a wallet. He is as round as a pudding and as fat as if rolled out of dough. His body is like a lump of mochi pastry, and his limbs like dango dumplings. He has lop ears that hang down over his shoulders a tremendous double chin, and a round belly. Though he will not let his beard grow long, the slovenly old fellow never has it shaved when he ought to. He is a jolly vagabond and never fit for company, but he is a great friend of the children, who romp over his knees and shoulders, pull his ears and climb up over his shaven head. He always keeps something good for them in his wallet, Sometimes he opens it wide and then makes them guess what's inside. They try to peep in, but are not tall enough to look over the edge. He makes tops, paints pictures or kites for the boys, and is the children's greatest friend. When the seven patrons meet together, Hotai is apt to drink more wine than is good for him. Tashitoku is almost the only one of the seven who never lays aside his dignity. He has a very grave countenance. He is the patron of talents. His pet animal is a spotted fawn. He travels about a good deal to find and reward good boys who are diligent in their studies and men who are fit to rule. In one hand, he carries a crook's staff of bamboo, at the top of which is hung a book or a roll of manuscript. His dress is like that of a learned doctor with a square cap, stole, and high-toed slippers. Bishamon is the patron of glory and fame. He is a mighty soldier with a golden helmet, breastplate, and complete armor. He is a protector of priests and warriors. He gives them skill in fencing, horsemanship, and archery. He holds a pagoda in one hand and a dragon sword in the other. His pet animal is the tiger. Six out of the jolly seven worthy are men. Benton is the only lady. She is the patron of the family and of the sea. She plays the flute and the guitar for the others and amuses them at feasts, sometimes even dancing for them. Her real home is in real food, and she is the queen of the world under the sea. She often dwells in the sea or ocean cave. Her favorite animal is the snake, and her servants are dragons. Once a year, the Jolly Seven meet together to talk over old times, relate their adventures, 
and have a supper together. Then they proceed to business, which is to arrange all the marriages for the coming year. They have a great many hanks of red and white silk, which are the threads of fate of those to be married. The white threads are the men, the red are the women. At first they select the threads very carefully and tie a great many pairs or couples neatly and strongly together so that the matches are perfect. All such marriages of threads make happy marriages among human beings. But by and by they get tired and lazy and instead of tying the knots carefully, they hurry up the work and then jumble them carelessly and finally toss and tangle all of the rest in a muss. This is the reason why so many marriages are unhappy. Then they began to frolic like big boys. Benton plays the guitar and Bishamon lies down on the floor resting with his elbow to hear it. Hotai drinks wine out of a shallow red cup as wide as a dinner plate. Daikoku and Fukurokujin begin to wrestle and when Daikoku gets his man down he pounds his big head with an empty gourd while, while Tashitoku and Ibisu begin to eat Thai fish. When the fun is over, Benton and Fokuru Kuchin play a game of checkers while the others look on and bet, except Hotai, the fat fellow, who is asleep. Then they get ashamed of themselves for gambling, and after a few days, the party breaks up and each one goes to his regular business again. I hope you enjoyed this. I found it so fascinating and I remember scenes and bits and pieces from different animes I've seen in this. And so I found it quite lovely. <laughs> so close this raven.